you know, he's working with different with different people, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna put his business out there as far, but he's working with some people down in Southern California to throw. I let you guys kind of uh, do the digging there to to find out more with that, but uh, you know, but he's this guy again. I, I go back to the type of guys that maximize their football potential. And, and what are the common denominators of those guys? They have high, uh, they have high uh, character, they have high football IQ, they love football, they're tough and they're competitive. Jalen is all of those things. And so Jalen is working on trying to get, you know, you know every, every angle he can to get better. Um, and so whether that's working with a, a quarterback guy or uh, studying film, uh, different ways of doing that. He's he's doing everything he can do to, to get better. Right. Um, I know the role that Zach played for us when he was in Indianapolis. And Zach was Zach was early on in Zach's career. To me, he was one of the best four or five wide receivers in the NFL. And what I mean by that, he was the fourth. He was the fourth guy. He could play. He could back up every position um, in the slot. He could back up on the outside. He played a big key in, in special teams. Uh, he brought an element of toughness to the to the group, um, and so that's what his role was early on. Then, the following year, he was you know after in 2019, he was like our number three. That got elevated with some injuries to being our number two and our number one at, at times. So Zach, you know, and I, and and where you really like Zach is again that toughness that he brings. So, you know. A lot is to be determined uh, still with the with the group, but it's an important piece that we're excited to have, and we know the type of football character that Zach brings to the Philadelphia Eagles and to our organization. And so, uh, couldn't be more happy about uh, Zach being a, being an Eagle. I had rough patches last season, right? Uh, Jalen had rough patches last season. We believe in those guys. You know, we believe in in Fletcher Cox. We believe in Derek Barnett. Um, not only of the type of player they are, like Fletcher Cox is still uh, dominant in the run game. He's still a dominant uh, player in the in the run game that, that can stop the run and he still can get after the and he still can get after the passer. Derek Barnett is everything that embodies what we want in a in the characteristics of a player. He's tough. He's competitive. He's got high football IQ. He's got high character. He loves football. I and I love Derek Barnett. All right. I love the type of player he that that and the type of person that he is. Um, and so we just felt like they fit, you know, what we want as not only as a player, but um, as a person and as a teammate. And so I'm excited to get those guys back in the roles uh, that they're gonna play this year and on our team. Hello everyone, this is Al Kabir, the analyst, and today I want to talk Nick Sirianni speech, and I just want to go over a few talking points, try to make it short and sweet, seeing the clips in the beginning. Yeah, let's get into it. This is Al Kabir, the analyst. Um, let's talk about when he talked about Jalen Hurts first. Let's get that out the way. Um, Jalen Hurts, he said Jalen Hurts is working with somebody in Southern California on his throwing. I like to hear that. I like to hear that because one of the things that Jalen Hurst is criticized the most is his throwing. And I don't really judge a man's judge a man by his words. I judge a man by his actions. He could say I'm working and working and not really doing nothing about it. But he's going out there. He's pretty quiet. He's not saying nothing about his throwing all season. Once again, been really, really quiet. Haven't even posted anything or any uploads of him working out. But it's good to know and hear that the coach knows he's working on these things. He had a rough patch of struggling, throwing the ball and things like that. And that is his weakness of his game, if I'm very honest, is the long ball, the accuracy of the long ball. So it's good to know that he's working on it. And I just like to hear it. I like to hear it. And I expect big things out of Jalen Hurts. Now, Howie Roseman need to do some things to get him some help. But I, I like that he's working on his arm, probably his accuracy, and things like that. Because the strong part of his game is his legs. Once again, it's good that he's working on his weakness. Because I think his legs and his ability to run 
and make all schedule plays aren't going to always be there, but hanging in a pocket, looking to see who's open, go through your first read, second read, or third read in the pocket will improve his game a lot, tremendously. Um, now, I want to talk about Zach Pascal. I want to talk about him. He was kind of like a controversial sign-in, even though I was a really big fan of it because I'm like, you can put him anywhere. Exactly what Nick Sirianni said. He sits one over 200 pounds, so you can rotate him to the outside. You can put him in the slot, and he want to use him how he was using him at Indy. Yes, he did struggle last year, but I think that's more of a fact of the same offensive coordinator not being there. And second, the changes in quarterbacks. Now, if they rotate him how I think they are, I think he'll be a great fit. Do I expect him to come in and be like, if we saw Allen Robinson or Robert Woods? No, I expect him to be a great rotational guy because that's a guy we needed. And J.J. Artega Whiteside wasn't that rotational guy. Hell, we barely even had a third wide receiver. But you need that rotational guy that could come in and still make plays. A great Ward, we expected him to be that guy. But was he? No, he was not. So I like the sign of Zach Pascal. I know a lot of people was like, it's like half and half. Some people don't like it. Why didn't you get this guy, that guy, that guy? And some people like, hey, they can like me. To put him in a rotational. Sorry, my voice sounded a little uh, yucky. I'm still under the weather, man. I'm trying to get over this cold. Um, lastly, I want to talk about Derek Barnett. So Derek Barnett contract was released. Well, not too bad. It was sort of a steal, but at the same time, who was really looking for Derek Barnett? I would say put him on a one-year deal, guess, instead of a two-year deal. But the cap hit is not bad, let's be honest. Um, I'll be showing you this clip, and this is why I didn't want Derek Barnett here. You see plays like that. Third and six. What do you do? Jump off size and pro spit. That was a third and one. He changed the complex of, of, of a lot of games that way. Not saying that we was going to stop the Chargers on third and six, but you increase the chances of getting first down if you turn that to a third and one. That was my thing about Derrick Barnett. It was 17 to 16 that game. We stopped though. We ran hot. Jalen Hurts just can't be stopped that game. Like, come on. You, you got to make better decisions. That's my thing with Derrick Barnett. Cool, Derrick Barnett can get pressure. He's not going to get you a lot of sacks. He's okay with stopping the run game. But when it comes down to it and those penalties, he hurts us a lot. He hurt us a lot. And that's my thing because I'm like, we might as well just cut our ties. You know, Derrick Barnett wasn't it. We got this draft coming up and it's a lot of defensive ends and defensive Lineman that can get the job done. Now, what Fletcher Cox, what you said about him, I totally agree. Because with him stopping the run, that really don't go on the stat sheet as much. But when you watch the game, he really affects the run, Fletcher Cox. He ain't going to give you as much sacks as like five, six years ago. But he will stop the run. But he still can get pressure. He's still top five, top ten in this league. He, he's good. He's good. So, yeah, man. What do you think and how do you feel? I'll be wrapped this up because I can barely breathe right now. But what do you think and how do you feel, man, about what Nick Seriati said, what Howie Roseman said, no, basically defended Darren Barnett, Jalen Hurts working on his game, and Zach Pascal. But this is Alcabana Analyst. Ghost.